Hello, my name is Peter Raymer. Today I'm going to talk about how to add a form splitter in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations, as well as in earlier versions of Microsoft Dynamics. Form splitters allow us to resize a form and see different areas of the form, um, larger or smaller. So this is an example of a vertical splitter. I can now see more real estate on the left-hand side. Um, this is really useful because maybe I have multiple columns in my grid over here, and if the grid were too small, I wouldn't be able to see those columns, and I'd have to scroll back and forth. So this really adds usability to the form and increases productivity um, because I don't have to scroll back and forth. So um, let's look at some examples of splitters in the system and then this will uh, give you better knowledge of when and where you might need to use a splitter. So first off, this is the currency exchange rates form. This is a base form in the system and you can see that I've got a vertical splitter. The way I use it is I hover over these two lines right here. It lights up this vertical bar I click and drag with my mouse and then I can move this splitter back and forth. Uh, similarly, there are also horizontal splitters. So if I look at this broker claims form, this actually has a horizontal splitter. I can again see these two little lines. When I hover over them, I get the whole bar uh, lit up. And then if I click and drag, I can make the top grid smaller in which case I can see more records in this bottom grid, or I can drag down and see more records in the top grid. Before kind of moving on, I want to explain that in D365, we gained a lot of functionality in terms of rearranging and resizing forms. It used to be in AX 2012, and before you had to, as a developer, um, really specify what fields go in what columns and really uh, define um, how those were shown to make sure that all of the fields fit properly within your window space. Thankfully, in um, D365, we now have a responsive web design, which means that um, the if we resize our browser window, these different fields will adjust automatically. So look at this uh, form as an example. I can see these three fields. They're all lined up in a row. Um, which helps increase what I can see vertically. But if I were to resize my browser um, smaller and smaller, it's actually going to dynamically move those fields on top of each other, give me the scroll bar. And so no matter kind of the size of this window, I can always see the fields that I need. Um, so that's extremely helpful in D365 um, and has taken away some of the needs for splitter controls. But there's still um, scenarios where it makes sense to have a splitter control. One is in this design pattern. This is called the Simple List and Details Tabular Grid. And in this situation, you actually have a grid. This grid often has three or more fields in it. And so that requires a, or at least uh, helps the need to have a splitter. I can then move this and get rid of my scroll bar here at the bottom if I'm making this wide enough. If I've got a grid with a lot of different fields that I really want to show on the grid, um, a splitter is going to help me show those fields without needing to scroll back and forth. So if I just take a minute to look at the form patterns, there are really two form patterns that support splitters in D365. One is the simple list and details tabular grid, and one is the task double. So let's briefly look at the Microsoft documentation for these so that you can see where those splitters would show up. And in the case where you want to use a splitter, you'll know to use these two types of form patterns to make that happen. So here I can see simple list and details, tabular grid. If I scroll down, I can actually see that the splitter group resides right here between the grid 
and um, the rest of my records over here. So just as an example, if I actually look on the item group form, the item group form uses the simple list and details pattern, but it uses the, um, the list grid type of variant, and that version does not have a uh, splitter but the tabular grid and the tree grid actually do. Um, so you're gonna wanna make a note of that. This one does not have a splitter, but then this type does as well as the tree control. Okay, the other type of form pattern in D365 that supports a splitter is the task double. This type of form pattern is when we have a grid in the top section as well as a child grid beneath below, then we have a splitter in between. So that's what we're looking at here on the broker claims form. We've got a grid on top and a grid below. So now that you understand what two types of form patterns um, support splitters, let's look at the code and see if we can understand how to make one in D365. Later, I'll explain the different ways we can add a splitter in um, later versions of AX2012, as well as versions before then. Okay, moving to Visual Studio, let's start with the exchange rate uh, form, which had the uh, vertical splitter we saw first. If I actually look on this design node and select it. I can see that this uses the design pattern simple list and details tabular grid. I really need to use this or the tree um, grid or task double to be able to support having a splitter. If I click over to the pattern tab, I can see that this is validating that we have a splitter group and that it's called list details splitter in this case. If I click on it and look at the properties, which you can look at the properties by right clicking and selecting properties, there's a few properties that we need to be setting. One is the height mode. This should be set to auto. The hide if empty property should be set to no. And then lastly, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, the width mode should be set to auto. And that's it. This is really powerful in D365 simply by using a form pattern and setting a few properties and creating this group. We've got all the functionality of the splitter. It used to be a lot harder and require code um, to actually add a splitter. Let's look at another example. So in this case, I'm looking at the MCR broker claims. That's the horizontal um, splitter that we were looking at before. Similarly, if I click on the design node and look at the pattern, I can see that this pattern is of type task double. It's got a lot more different nodes, a header tab and grid, as well as a child tab with a grid in it. But I can see here there's a splitter between the parent and child, and it is of type group. And it, in this case, it's called control split um, hori. And so if I select that one, Again, I've got the same um, parameters that I need to make sure I'm setting. I need to set the height mode to auto, the height if empty to no, and I need to set the width mode to um, size to available. So this is slightly different. This is the one property that is different between a horizontal splitter and a vertical splitter. A horizontal splitter has this property set to size available, whereas a vertical splitter is gonna have this one um, set to auto. Okay, um, now let's see if we can actually create a um, splitter ourselves. And so in this case, I actually created a brand new form. Um, it is called Tutorial Model Simple List and Details Tabular Grid. So a really long name. I added to it a custom table that I had called RSM Model. It's got a couple unique identifiers as well as a couple other fields. When I do that, and I select Simple List and Details Tabular Grid and look at the pattern. Again, I can see that I need to add a splitter. All I really need to do is follow this design pattern, select this um, group in the middle, make sure that it 
has these pa uh, properties set. Auto, height of them, do you know? Width mode, auto, when I'm doing a vertical splitter. And then in the end, I'm going to be able to have a form that looks like this, um, where I get a splitter just like I see on any base Microsoft Forms. This allows me to drag and drop or, or drag and resize the different areas of the form. So this is all well and good for uh, D365. We can see that adding a splitter is really easy. Um, it doesn't require any code, just setting properties. However, in late versions of AX 2012 and er earlier, we actually uh, we had to add code in versions before AX 2012 and earlier. Well, eventually in the late late versions of AX 2012, um, Microsoft made some changes where we could just set some properties as well um, in order to add a splitter in 2012. So I'm actually going to just show you um, an example as well from the article. You can review this in the linked article as well. So in AX 2012, one example that you can look at is the asset group. This has a vertical splitter you can actually just um, select it here and then set the auto declaration to yes and then set the style to splitter vertical container. And by doing this, um, the system will actually add some code to the class declaration method and the init method automatically for you and then the splitter will work. So this is far easier than it used to be where you'd have to add um, several methods yourself. And so uh, if you're adding a vertical splitter, uh, set the property, the style property to splitter vertical container. Um, if you're adding a um, horizontal splitter, set the property to splitter horizontal container. Okay, so that explains if you've got a late version of AX2012. If you're still on a, say, early version of AX2012, or even earlier, a version of AX29, 2009, or before, um, you actually have to add some code to make a splitter work. So real briefly, I want to look at one example just in case you're in that situation. And you can refer to my article um, again for the code snippets that you need for this. So you can actually see the bomb table in AX2012 is one example where it's still using the old way of adding all the code to make this horizontal splitter first. And here's the steps that we need to do. First, we need a group in the middle of our top group and our bottom group. We need to set the auto declaration property to yes. We also need to set the width to column width and the height to column height um, as starters. Now we've got our splitter group. You can name it whatever you need to, but we need to remember the name that we're given to this group. Next, we need to add to the class declaration method, which is just under the form methods right here. We need to add this line of code here, sys form splitter y, and then we give the name of the variable form splitter. If we're adding a vertical splitter, we need to actually um, change this to be a sys form splitter underscore x. Okay, next, the, the next step is to go to the init method, override the init method if you haven't already, and then add this line of code sometime after the call to super. So set form splitter equals new sys splitter underscore y. If you're doing the other kind, do underscore x. Then um, pass in each of these parameters. The first parameter is the name of the group control that is the splitter. The second parameter is the name of the group control that is directly above the splitter. And then lastly, you need to pass in um, the word this. This refers to um, the uh, form object itself. Okay, then there's a couple more steps. Um, we need to right click on the methods node right underneath the splitter group control. So that's right here. And we need to click add new method. And we need to do that three different times to add all three of these methods. The first method is the mouse down method. 
and it's going to look like this. You can just copy and paste the code directly as long as you've named your variable this like I've shown you so far. The, this code will work just as is. Next, copy and paste the mouse move method into your second method. Repeat adding a method one more time and add the mouse up method. So finally, well, I've highlighted here the different methods we need to touch. We need to add code to the class decoration method. We need to add the init method. We need to create the mouse down, mouse move, and mouse up methods on our splitter group control. And we need to make sure that the auto declaration property is set to yes on both our splitter group control and our group above it. So hopefully you don't need to um, add a splitter through all that code anymore. Hopefully you're able to just do it very quickly and easily um, using the uh, either simple list and details uh, tabular grid design pattern or the task double design pattern um, in D365. But I've shown you the ways that you can do it um, for all the different ways. Hopefully you've learned something new today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.